19 our case today just only one day old uh, admitted as case of uh, congenital pneumonia called cur symmetrical IUGR uh, 2 pg uh, admitted as case of congenital pneumonia uh, immediately the patient connected to mechanical ventilation on uh, actually uh, ACPC and uh, volume uh, guarantee uh, with uh, higher uh, setting but uh, unfortunately the patient is not responding to the conventional mechanical ventilation so we decide to shift him from conventional mechanical ventilation to high frequency based on the four things the first thing based on the clinical patient is the technic and the most comfortable the second the based on the biochemical the blood gas it show it respiratory acidosis and uh, regarding to the x-ray show the small uh, lung volume and mechanically is actually the patient is reached to higher uh, conventional uh, mechanical uh, ventilation setting the BIB is reached almost 25 over 6 and the FI oxygen was 95 so based on the clinical and the biochemical and the radiological and the mechanical so we shift the patient from conventional mechanical ventilation to high frequency so what is the indication for high frequency in this case because first of all clinically the patient is not comfortable in the kidney and stress biochemically it's a respiratory acidosis and radiologically small lung volume and mechanically he's reached to higher ventilatory setting especially the BIB is reached 25 over uh, six and if I oxygen is 100 percent so what is the indication of high frequency depend on full term or three term full term depends on the underlying uh, cause maybe conium in or uh, premature babies it will be rds or respiratory failure and if there is any air uh, leak if there is any air leak uh, for this patient actually it's, it's full term and having congenital pneumonia, this is the underlying cause, and also having respiratory failure, not respond to usual conventional mechanical ventilation, and reach it to 25, uh, 25 over uh, six, actually. So they will shift him to high frequency uh, ventilation, oscillatory uh, ventilation. There's two, two approaches for the high frequency, either to go for optimal uh, long volume strategy or low volume long strategy. This patient actually will go for optimal uh, long strategy, optimal long volume strategy based on the clinical condition of this patient. So the uh, high or optimal uh, long volume strategy will check first how much the map in conventional mechanical ventilation. It was actually, it was 14. So if I'm going to shift him from conventional to high frequency, I have to add one to three. So I add two, so I make it the map 16. Instead of, because it was in conventional mechanical ventilation, the map it was 14. So I will go by high or optimal long volume strategy. So I will make it the map 16. This is the first uh, line or, or first approach. To, to change from conventional to high frequency. So the, the second issue is here, I will put the frequency will keep it uh, 10, and uh, inspiratory to expiratory, it will be one to two. The, uh, actually, the, the inspiratory time, it will be, is not matter of, uh, of the, is not matter one to two or one to three, it's matter of the percentage. It will be 33 percent, it will be fixed. Amplitude, this is a pressure variation around the uh, map. It will be actually uh, double the map or triple the map. Double the map or triple. It will be same the BIB in conventional. So if the BIB it was 25, so I will reduce it by two. It will be 23. And uh, if I, will, I will put it as double the map. If the map 16, so double the map, it will be almost 32. Or you have to choose to uh, 20, uh, to, it will be 23. You have two options. So uh, based on the patient is not responding, so we reach it to 45, based on the blood gas and the clinically. Initially, we put him in 36, so it will be double the map, but unfortunately, the patient is start to desaturate and having CO2 accumulation, so increasing the amplitude now is 45. If I oxygen, 
uh, we bought it uh, initially at 60 and we come down because the patient it was saturating uh, well. So what is the difference between conventional mechanical ventilation and high frequency? And uh, why we are choosing high frequency? Because it's less lung injury. Why less lung injury? Because actually the, the map, it will be uh, constant and extending. Constant, this means no fluctuation like the conventional. So it's not go up, it will make it uh, barotrauma, it will not go down, it lead to atelectical trauma. And also the B, uh, BIB, it's not relying on the BIB, it's, uh, because if you're increasing the BIB, it's lead to the barotrauma. And also the high frequency, it uh, having the inspiration and expiration is active. Not like the conventional, just the inspiration is active and expiration it will be passive. So it will help for elimination of the CO2. It will eliminate the CO2. And uh, also at uh, high frequency, it will be high rate with a small tidal volume. So it is having small tidal volume, it will avoid or decrease the risk of volume. So why we choose the high frequency based on this with less lung injury, less lung injury because the map is constant and uh, distending. It will help for the lung recruitment with static uh, pressure. So it will help to improve the function residual uh, capacity without inducing barotrauma or atelectric trauma or small and small lung volume. It will avoid also the volume trauma and biotrauma and all the uh, lung associated or ventilation associated lung uh, injury. And this is the parameter, and we set the, 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 the we set already the, uh, we choose the high frequency, and we set the parameter, and why we choose the high uh, frequency. And also the most important point also is having decoupling or separation independently. The, the high frequency, it will be oxygenation alone, uh, independent on the ventilation. Oxygenation, it will depend on the map and the FI oxygen. Ventilation, it will be amplitude and frequency. The amplitude is directly proportional to the tidal volume. And the frequency, it will be in proportional or indirectly proportional to the tidal volume. For example, if there is CO2 accumulations, so I have to increase the amplitude. The amplitude, this is called the pressure variation around the uh, map. So I have to increase it. So if I increase the amplitude, I increase the tidal volume, it will eliminate more CO2 or remove more CO2. The frequency, it will be the opposite. It will be the opposite. And the frequency, it is the number of the oscillation. It's the number of the oscillation per second. Number of oscillation per second. If, if 10, this means 10 per second times uh, 60, it will be 600 per minute. The frequency, it will be in direct relation to the tidal volume. If I reduce the uh, Frequency, the tidal volume, it will increase, but it will be dangerous, it will be uh, dangerous. And the frequency will not touch it, it will be thin, unless you have to consult your uh, senior if you would like to uh, change it. So, in summary, our aim from uh, this educational uh, video, first, when to shift the patient from conventional mechanical ventilation to high frequency oscillatory ventilation. And the second, and high frequency ventilation, you can use it as rescue. You cannot use it as electively or from the start as rescue. You can use it first. You have to try conventional. Then, if the conventional is failed, the conventional mechanical ventilation, you have to use the uh, high frequency as rescue as early as preferable. And why the high frequency is less lung injury? And the fourth uh, message yeah. from this video also. Uh, what is the difference between the conventional mechanical ventilation and high frequency? So the first message, when to shift the patient from conventional to high frequency, clinically, the patient is not uh, stachybnic, not, uh, not comfortable, and uh, biochemically, there is respiratory uh, acidosis, and, bio and uh, radiologically, there is small lung volume, and the most important, mechanically, the patient is reached to maximum uh, ventilatory pressure, for preterm, it will be 22, the BIP it will be 22 to 25, and for full term, 25 to 28. We reach it to maximum BIP. So this is when I will shift the patient from conventional to high frequency. So the second message, what is the difference between conventional and high frequency? The, uh, 
the difference actually the high frequency it will be high rate with a small tidal volume so small tidal volume it will prevent or decrease the risk of the volume and also the map it will be constant and extending pressure so it's constant is not swinging up and down so it will prevent or reduce the risk of the barotrauma and atelectric trauma and for sure the bio trauma and also here the inspiration it will be active and expiration will be active also so it will help for elimination of the CO2 in conventional it will be the inspiration is uh, it will be active and expiration it will be passive uh, and also uh, the other important point is decoupling or separation or independent the oxygenation is not dependent on the ventilation not like the conventional if you change the, something in the ventilation this is uh, linked the oxygenation linked or closely linked to the uh, ventilation so it will uh, change all here in high frequency especially in the sensor medic it will be once you change in the oxygenation will not affect the ventilation and this is the most important decoupling or the separation or independent so this is the, the second message so the first message when to shift the patient from conventional to high frequency and what is the indication of the high frequency and what is the difference between conventional mechanical ventilation and high frequency and why the high frequency is less injury than the conventional at the end i would like to pray for my colleague is going for a report so report and Jordanian board also i would like to uh, thank our staff for helping to deliver this educational uh, activity thank you